Welcome to your first project with SmartBench. And for this, we're going to create a really simple sign. We're going to turn this piece of stock into this. From this 12 millimeter plywood, we've got a sign with a simple engraving on the middle, four bolt holes, and a single contour cut around the outside to cut the sign out of the stock material. In this video, I'm going to be leading you through the project step by step. At times, we'll come across something where we already have a dedicated video, where we really go into depth on it. When that happens, I'll bring in a thumbnail like this. All these videos will have links in the description below. And I'll still walk you through step by step, but at some point you should really check these out. They'll make you a better CNC machinist, and in turn, that's going to help you get the most out of SmartBench. Before starting this project, you need to have watched the first setup video, which is going to talk you through assembly, activation, and setup of your SmartBench. You'll need a piece of stock wood, which is 650 millimeters minimum and 12 millimeters thickness. You will also need a 90 degree engraving bit as well as a six millimeter end mill. And you'll also need some CAD files. You can either generate these yourself in Vectric by following this video, which takes you through step by step to create the CAD files you need for this project. Or you can just download them from our website. We'll leave the link in the description below. Now we've got the dependencies out of the way, let's turn SmartBench on. Now I want to do a manual square with this, so before I turn it on, I'm going to pull the lower beam up against the legs. We've got a video on that too. If you want to learn more about the theory of homing and squaring, check it out. The beam's nice and square against the legs now, so I'm just going to turn SmartBench on by rotating the e-stop button. Once the console's booted, accept the safety information. And because we're doing a manual square, say, no, I've already manually squared and press the home button to start the homing procedure. Now the console is on and SmartBench is homed, it's time to transfer those job files to SmartBench. Now you can either do this through a USB stick or across your Wi-Fi network using our app which we call Smart Transfer. I prefer to use Smart Transfer because it's quicker and easier, uh, but it's up to you. Either way, we've got videos on both. It's time to get our stock material fixed to the bench. To position the materials, I'm gonna to need to lift the upper beam so that I can slide them underneath. And to do that, I wanna have the Z head in the middle of the upper beam. I'm gonna go into the Pro app and onto the manual move screen and using the keys, navigate the Z head over to the middle of the beam. Now the Z head's in the middle, I'm going to take the console out, unlock the beam, and just lift it up a little bit so that I can slide my materials underneath it. I can now load on my spoil board, sliding that underneath the beam. Now the spoil board's on, let's talk a little bit about work holding. We've got a video on that too. But for now, I'll tell you that I'm using a nine millimeter melamine faced MDF board. We talk about what makes a good spoil board in this video, but for now, I can tell you that I'm looking for something flat, doesn't have any high spots, track marks are okay, but in particular needs to be smooth on that bottom surface so that when the wheels on the lower beam travel along the Y axis, it doesn't get snagged along the way. I'm gonna move the beam 
up the bench now, and that's so that I can access the spoil board and clamp it to the bench. And to do that, I'm going to use the manual move function again on the Pro app and just walk the beam up. I want to position the spoil board so that it's in the middle of the bench to make sure that it's making as much contact with all the bearings on the lower beam as possible. So to do that, I'm just going to look at the position of the bearings and slide the board over until those bearings are all covered. Before clamping, I want to make sure that my spoil board is now parallel to the bench. And to do that, I'm going to take my tape measure and just push it up against the side of the bench and measure off where my spoil board sits at both ends and adjust the position of my spoil board until those values are the same. And a final check to make sure I'm still covering my bearings on the lower beam. Now I'm going to clamp the spoil board down to the Y bench. Again, in our basic work holding video, there's a few do's and don'ts. At the home end, I'm going to use my speed clamps to clamp down onto the plates on the legs. And at the far end, I'm going to be clamping down onto the wheel tracks of the Y bench. Now that's okay because I'm only using speed clamps and you should never use screw powered G clamps on the wheel tracks because there's a risk that you might damage the wheel tracks. Now it's time to position your stock material onto Smartbench. Now, if you've just downloaded the files, you won't know what the orientation of the cut is. So I'm gonna show you that the finished cut will be in this orientation here with the long distance along the x-axis and the height along the y-axis. Stock orientation is important to make sure that your cut doesn't fall outside the bounds of the material. When I'm happy on the position, now it's time to fasten our stock to the spoil board. Now again, our basic work holding video is gonna talk you through a few different options here, but for now, I'm just gonna use some screws. My screw is going to be passing through the stock, through the spoil board, and also into the sacrificial clamping panels on the bench. The only thing I need to be careful about is to make sure that I'm not going to screw through any aluminium in the bench. And I can do that by getting a visual reference as to where the aluminium lies before I do the screw. If you're screwing through stock and spoil board outside the width of the bench, make sure that the screw doesn't go so deep as to then foul on the lower beam as it travels up the y-axis. I need to check that my screw heads are flush or below the top surface of my stock material and make sure that they're not positioned in any place where there might be a tool path. The areas of the stock shown are safe zones where the cutter will not go in this particular job. I'm going to position the beam over the stock by using our manual move again. As the beam approaches the stock, check that it will clear it and clamp it higher if necessary. I'll make sure that the Z head is in the middle of the beam so that when I lower the beam, we've got a nice even pressure distribution. Before I drop the upper beam down onto the stock, I'm going to reposition the bearings which sit on the lower surface of the upper beam so that they're all over the stock as much as possible thereby giving as much pressure distribution onto that stock as I can get. There are rollers on both sides of the beam which slide along the length. I'll loosen off the locks at the end of the beam to allow the upper beam to drop onto the stock. And before I lock off the position of the upper beam, I'm just going to check to make sure that all of the bearings are sitting evenly on the top of my stock surface. As I lock off, I'm not applying any downward force on the end of the beam. Now we've done our work holding, it's time to put the cutter into the spindle. Now our first operation is to engrave on the top surface, so we'll be using an engraving bit. Our CAD file calls for a 90 degree V-groove bit. We'll move the Z head closer to us so we can get the spindle out. 
And now I'll take my driver to unclamp the spindle. I'll disconnect the power cable and a data cable, rotate the spindle, and then just lift it out of the Z head. And now I'm ready to change my tool. To take a tool out, I'll push the spindle lock and rotate until that engages. Take my collet spanner, undo the collet, slide the cutter out, and then remove the existing collet so I can put in one that's gonna fit my tool. Next, I need to choose a collet to fit my cutter. Now, this is actually quite important. We've got a video on that, and you should definitely check this out. Picking the right collet, the right size, how to maintain your collets, and how to load them correctly will have a big difference on how well your job performs. My cutter's got a quarter inch shank, so that means I'm gonna use a seven to six millimeter collet to give a secure grip. The size is normally etched on the face of the collet. I'll start by loading the collet into the spindle knot and then thread the knot onto the spindle, locking the spindle with the red button there. Load up my tool, making sure it's not going too far in. And then finally using my collet spanner with an eighth of a turn to lock my tool into the spindle. Again, check out the collet video because that's gonna show you the correct positioning of the cutter within the collet. You don't want it to touch the back of the taper, but you need to make sure at least 70% of the length of the collet is making contact with the shank. Now I've got the cutter in the spindle, it's time to put the spindle into the Z head. We've got a nice video on that, and there's a few things to get right, so let's go through those steps now. You're gonna make sure that the spindle's on by pushing the switch down, and then insert the spindle into the Z head, taking care not to ding the cutter. You're gonna rotate the spindle slightly so that it's in line with the aluminum extrusion, and then plug in my power cables and data cables and finally lock off that spindle. To do this, check that the spindle can freely rotate in the clamp. Tighten the clamping bolt until the spindle can no longer rotate. Then apply no more than one eighth of a turn. Do not exceed this tightening since it will crush the bearings inside the spindle and reduce its life. Final check to make sure that that spindle is secure. Now it's time to set SmartBench's working datum. We've got a video on this, and if you're new to CNC, you need to watch it because it explains how datums work. But the brief version is that by setting SmartBench's working datum, we can position where the job files are going to get cut on the machine. If you've only downloaded the job files from our website, then you won't know where the datum is in the job files. So I'm gonna tell you that we positioned the datum in the bottom left corner of the project. In this example, we'll be placing the working datum on the stock exactly here. This position makes sure that all the rollers on the upper beam will be in contact with the top surface of the stock throughout the duration of the job. I'm going to mark that with a pencil now. And finally, we positioned our Z datum on the bottom surface of the stock. Let's set SmartBench's working datum in the XY plane first. And to do that, we'll move the Z head over until the laser crosshair aligns with the job file datum. I'm using the infinite move to get into the right area and then I will scroll into smaller increments to be able to get that laser crosshair aligned. To set the working datum in the XY plane, I'm gonna push the set button on the console. It'll ask me whether I want to be using the laser datum. I do, and so I push yes. 
Z head then positions itself so that the tool center is over the working datum. The Z datum in the job file is on the bottom surface of the stock. So now we've got to move SmartBench's working datum to be in line with that. To do that, we need to move the Z head so that the tool center is clear of the stock and it can reach the spoil board below. I'm going to take out the dust shoe plug and drive the Z head down so that it's close. I'm going to use the probe plate to detect when the tool tip is at the right height. So to do that, I'm going to insert the probe plate underneath the tool and then press the probe button. You need to hold the probe plate down flat while the tool is probing. On contact, it automatically detects, saves the datum in that position and then retract. Now we need to reinsert our dust shoe plug. Make sure that when you reinsert it into the dust shoe, that the black part fits into the slots. Now we've set our datums in X, Y and Z, it's time to load our first file. So let's do that now. I'm going to go onto the console, click on load a file, and then find the file that we've positioned here earlier on. You can see the full file name displayed on the top of the screen. Or if it's difficult to find your file name, you can toggle the display by pushing this button, which will show you the full length of the file names. I'm going to select that. The file will analyze and then because this is the first time I've run this job, I'm now going to agree to checking the job for errors. SmartBench will now run through the file and simulate it and just check that there's no errors in the G-code. We can see that this file is fine, so we can press the finish button to exit the screen. And we can see a preview of that file in this window here. Now we've loaded the file, I want to check to see where that file is actually going to get cut. In the XY plane, I can do that by clicking on the map screen and then looking for the red box on the map, which represents the footprint which the job will cut. Also, notice the position of the target, which represents SmartBench's working datum in the XY plane. Now we need to plug in our extractor hose into the Z head. I'm going to pull that out of the lower beam and engage it into the coupling on the Z head. A little turn to lock it in. It's important to check that the bag is empty on the extractor, which I've done. And now I'm just going to do a quick power check to make sure that it's hooked up to SmartBench. I can do that by pushing the vacuum button on the manual move. And as you can hear, it's hooked up. And while I'm here, I can also check that my spindle is plugged in and clamped correctly just by turning it on. And I find that great because it gives me confidence that I know my extractor's working and I know that my spindle's good to go. We're now ready to do the cut. And I know that if you're a first time CNC user, then we've covered a lot of new concepts, which might seem like a lot of new information to take in. But I guarantee you that the more you use SmartBench and the more projects that you do, all of what we've just covered will very quickly become second nature. So without any more further ado, let's get into the exciting bit, the cut. To start the job, we're going to click on the green play button. There is a screen which asks if you're using the spindle or stylus. In this case, we are using the spindle as we're routing and presented with a question, should SmartBench automatically lift the Z-axis away from the job if it pauses? In most cases, this is very useful, but if you're running a job where you're using a cutter which would create an undercut feature, for example, a T-cutter, then you wouldn't want that, otherwise it would try to rip through the material on the retract. We're using a regular cutter, so I'm gonna say yes to that and accept the safety warning screen. We're just about to push the go button. Now, I would recommend that before you push the go button, continue watching this video to see the cut and how I react to the real-time speeds and feeds to make sure that the cutter is doing the best that it can throughout the job. Our setup here will be subtly different to your setup 
in terms of the sharpness of the cutters that you're using and the material that you're cutting through. And so real-time adjustments are a normal course of action when you start a job, just to make sure that the spindle and the tools are comfortable as they proceed through the cut. And finally, we're just going to push the go button. You may need to reduce the feed depending on the material you're cutting and the condition of your cutter. You'll see me adjusting the machine feed and spindle speed in real time. We've got a video on that here. Our nominal values, which we've set at the CAD CAM stage, typically need minor adjustment in real time to suit any variation in material or cutter condition. The spindle needs to run at a constant speed which makes a consistent noise. If you hear the spindle tone dipping, it's likely that your spindle is under too much load. A good place to start to remedy this is by reducing your feed rate. Other factors may include sharpness of the cutter or poor extraction. So we finished the first operation. Smartbench has done the engraving. And now it's time to do the second operation and with this, we will be cutting the four bolt holes and the contour all out in one file. For this next job, we'll need a six millimeter cutter to match the job file. We've got a really good video on cutters, which is going to show you what to look for and what makes a good cutter for the application. With this one, I've got a nice upcut spiral, which is fantastic for chip evacuation. And it's also quite short which is great because it means that there's less leverage on the spindle, which just adds to our stability. So let's get it into the spindle. We'll take our spindle out, extract the tool. We're using a six millimeter cutter, so we need to swap our collet for a six to five millimeter collet. Reinsert the new tool, tighten up the collet, and then refit the spindle. The new cutter for the next job is in. So now, because we've changed the cutter, we need to reset the datum in the z-axis. So let's do that now. We'll accept the job completed screen from the last operation, go to manual and drive the Z head so that it can reach the spoil board, which is on the same plane as the stock bottom, which is how the job datum has been set. So I'm driving the tool to close to the spoil boards, taking the probe plate, sliding it underneath the tool and I'm pressing the pro button. Z head flashes green, that means it's saved the new preset for the Z datum. And now I'm ready to load my second job. We'll go into the file loading context, push the file open button, find the second operation file, say yes. I'd like it to check for errors because this is the first time that I've run this file. So I'm accepting that. It says the file's okay. I finish. And now I'm just gonna repeat what we've done before. I'm gonna press the green play button, accept that it can lift on pausing, accept safety screen, and then press go. By the way, a final note on safety. Check out our video for a few tips on what to look out for. I'm gonna use the manual move screen to position the head away from the stock so that I can get to it. And then this file use tabs to secure the finished piece. So I'm gonna take a knife and just cut through those tabs because it's nice soft material. It's 
So there we have it. My first project. I'm really happy with the, the cleanliness of the cut. The holes are good, punch through well. And the last job would be just to shave off the tabs with um, a blade and then possibly a file just to clean those up. So that brings us to the end of the first project video. We've included all of the links to all the different sections in the description below. So if you want to learn more about those, check them out. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.